and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. In 2021, there was not a single transition of communities from the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church to the schismatic structure of the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine. Metropolitan Anthony of Baryspol and Brovery, Chancellor of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, has recently spoken about this in an interview. The situation has changed, perhaps even dramatically, in comparison with the time of President Poroshenko. Then the state policy was to infringe on the rights of believers and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and to simply destroy it. Now there is no such state policy, there is no order from Kiev to seize churches. If we look at the statistics, then in 2019 there were 128 seizures of churches. Last year there were only 7. In 2019 there were 88 so-called transitions. And last year there were none at all. That is, there is no state order to do it. There are no instructions from the center and so the situation is gradually stabilizing. Metropolitan Anthony said that the situation will nevertheless remain difficult for the canonical church, since anti-church laws in Ukraine have not yet been cancelled. According to him, more than 1,000 parishes still do not have a state registration because of those laws. He says the following. During this period, because of the law on renaming, we cannot register a single bishop whom we have appointed or moved in a diocese. Today, more than 1,000 parishes do not have state registration. A whole local church exists there. Its parishes are open. Documents have been submitted. But due to the fact that the law is still there, well, yes, it is suspended, but nevertheless, these parishes are not registered by the state. This is a very big challenge. A famous Hollywood actor and comedian Chris Tucker has turned down a $12 million offer because the role would have required him to go against his Christian faith and forced him to swear and appear to smoke drugs. According to the rapper Ice Cube, the star of the Rush Hour franchise was asked to reprise his role in the comedy film Friday, but turned it down. Writing on Twitter, Ice Cube said the following, we were ready to pay Chris Tucker 10 to 12 million dollars to do next Friday, but he turned us down for religious reasons. He didn't want to cuss or smoke weed on camera anymore. Tucker has previously spoken openly about his faith and how it has changed the direction of his career. For instance, he has said this. Being a Christian helps me in comedy. I have to dig deeper to find something that's still funny and not raunchy. It's harder. I like the challenge. The primate of the Albanian Orthodox Church, Archbishop Anastasios of Tirana in Old Albania, has called for a meeting of the primates of local Orthodox churches to overcome the schism. He published a statement in connection with the decision of the Russian Orthodox Church to create an exarchate in Africa, which, according to him, was a continuation of the church crisis in Ukraine. For instance, it says the following. Since the beginning of the ecclesiastical crisis in Ukraine, we have pointed out with oral and written arguments that time does not heal ecclesiastical rifts and schisms. On the contrary, it deepens and hardens them. The recent decision of the Moscow Patriarchate to establish an exarchate on the African continent confirms the initial fears. Along with a schism among millions of Ukrainian Orthodox, a new schism has been created in the sensitive African continent, where Orthodox foreign mission has been developing in recent decades. The idea of an immediate meeting of the old primates of local Orthodox churches was also supported by the Metropolitan Isaiah of Tamasos from the Church of Cyprus. He declared this. The statement of the Moscow Patriarchate about the creation of an exarchate on the territory of the Church of Alexandria is a clear continuation of the Ukrainian church crisis, which continues to develop with unpredictable consequences. Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople has refused to discuss his decision on Ukraine at a pan-Orthodox council. The chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilaria Novolokolamsk, had recently said that the situation in Africa is directly linked with the crisis in Ukraine. I quote, 
we would have not stepped into Africa if it had not been for the persistent request of the African clergy, who appealed to us soon after Patriarch Theodore of Alexandria joined the schism. The first such appeal was made two years ago. We have patiently waited. We studied the appeals of the clergy who handed in their petitions. We sent various signals to the Patriarch of Alexandria that we would not like to step into the territory of Africa. But when our proposals were turned down, when the Patriarch of Alexandria showed that he was not going to change his stance on Ukraine, what was left for us to do? For this reason, now those who have appealed to us have been accepted. On December 15, 2018, former President of Ukraine Pyotr Poroshenko cancelled flights that were supposed to bring home from Kiev the hierarchs of Constantinople. One of the schismatic hierarchs, Daniil Kovalchuk, has spoken about this in his sermon. He said that during the so-called Unification Council, when a decision was made to create a schismatic Orthodox Church of Ukraine, there was a conflict between the Ukrainian schismatics and the hierarchs of Constantinople. The latter, without waiting for the end of the council, quickly left for the airport. However, the president of Ukraine, Parashenka, intervened in the matter, ordered to cancel their flights from the country and personally went to the airport to return the guests from the Church of Constantinople. In 2021, venture capitalists poured more than $175 million into a handful of software companies developing spirituality tools for smartphones, betting big that tech startups can find a way to make a profit of a prayer, daily devotion, scripture meditation and Bible reading. Ten years ago, the amount of venture funding invested in religion apps was negligible, coming in at less than $100,000. By 2016, that number had climbed to $6 million, and by 2019, tech investors put about $1.30 out of every $10,000 they invested in startups into religious apps. The two big winners are Hello and Glorify. Hello, a Catholic app that has partnered with 250 parishes across the country, but especially targets people who have stopped going to church, received more than $50 million. Glorify, an app that promises to help users develop a daily worship habit, raised $40 million in investments. According to the investment analysts, such high numbers indicate that the pandemic drew attention to how much regular religious practice could be moved online. However, investors clearly believe religion apps will continue to be popular long after the pandemic passes into memory. The Synod of the Alexandrian Orthodox Church has convened for a two-day meeting to discuss the possible response to the fact that more than 100 African priests have expressed a desire to leave the Alexandrian Patriarchate for the Russian Orthodox Church. In its statement, the Patriarchate of Alexandria said the following. We express deep sorrow over the decision of the Moscow Patriarchate to establish an exarchate within the jurisdiction of the ancient Alexandrian Church. Let me remind you that on November 8, 2019, Patriarch Theodorus of Alexandria officially recognized the Schismatic Orthodox Church of Ukraine, despite the fact that only one year earlier he stated that there was only one canonical church in Ukraine, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, headed by his Beatitude Metropolitan Anufri. Then, in 2021, Patriarch Theodorus concelebrated with the leader of the Ukrainian Schismatics, Sergei Domenko, which means that he violated a number of Orthodox canons, for example, the 11th Apostolic Canon, according to which he himself had thus joined the schism. In the same way, all those clergy and hierarchs who agreed with the recognition of the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine and did not oppose the decision of their patriarch to concelebrate with the schismatics had also fallen away to the schism. Those priests and lay people of Africa who did not agree with the recognition of the schismatics were thus left without a patriarch and without a bishop. At the same time, chairman of the Moscow Patriarch's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion of Alkalamsk, explained the reasoning of the Russian Orthodox Church. He said the following. The point is not about invasion at all, or about our wish to weaken in some way the Patriarchate of Alexandria. 
the decision of the Synod of the Russian Orthodox Church offers an opportunity for Orthodox believers in African countries who do not wish to be associated with a schism to be in communion with a canonical Orthodox Church and to receive Holy Communion and other sacraments from canonical priests. Well, this is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.